Welcome to Live Edge, episode number next. I'm Matt. I'm Amy. Welcome to the show. Tonight, we have special guests, Jeannie and Davis. They have a YouTube channel. If you're not familiar with them, links in the description below to their channel, their website, and their Instagram. Go check them out. Be sure and hit that subscribe button when you check them out. Mail call this week. We got for, uh, some really cool cups from mm -hmm. Sherry's uh, Crafting Central. You got to read I, mine. And I also put their li the link to Miss Sherry's uh, Facebook page in the description if you want to go check her out. She's got some really cool tumblers she sent us. Mm -hmm. 731 Woodwork uh, tumbler with wood, wood grain. grain. And then Miss 731 got her own tumbler. It's all glittery. And yes. it says, I am a Bible believing, prayer praying, <laughs> prayer praying, <laughs> praise singing, faith walking, highly favored, heart blessing, <laughs> Jesus loving, loving, saved. And serving Christian girl. Woo, so he really said he was awesome. a Christian girl. Y'all heard it. <laughs> so that's really cool. Thank you, Miss Sherry. And husband. thank you so much. That was it, awesome. It was awesome. Y'all make sure you drop your states. We'll give you a shout out uh, halfway through the show. All right, I got to push a button. So, oh Lord, you may or may not. Y'all may want to pray for that. This is this week's sawdust spotlight. This is from Kirk Duncan, and this is a coffee table with some very, very unique legs. <laughs> That's it's really cool. It's really it is cool. Really looking. cool. It almost looks like like a bear trap or something. Yeah. And he says on there, if you read it, he says that he had to make every leg with no lathe. So that's really it, interesting. It, it almost looks like teeth. Yeah, it's really crazy looking. That's pretty cool. I mean, it's cool. I, I'd it's like to unique. see how they're going to use that. Mm -hmm. How it's going to be, I don't know, utilized. Yeah, I don't know. It would be interesting to see it all finished and, mm -hmm. and the space it was going to be in, you know? Super cool. Yeah, like a Great medieval job. theme or something, that would oh. fit right in. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Well, without further ado, if I can figure out how to unmute. Oh, Lord. We know that you guys have asked a lot to yep. get this couple on here, and so we're super excited to have yep. them with us This is tonight. Jeannie and Davis. I think they're muted. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, I'll figure out how to unmute you. How did I mute them? So if you're new to our show tonight, yeah, he what? pushes buttons, he messes things up, so you'll that. see him wave, but... <laughs> yeah, I, I gotta figure this out. They're muted. Muted in sound levels. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, there we are. Uh-huh. There, you, there go. you go. Now you're live. Maybe. Are you there? I just unmuted them. They gotta be there. <laughs> Stand by. Stand by. It says muted in sound levels. Unmuted. Okay, so... He never knows how to work this never. stuff. I never know how so to work. So he tries really hard, though. So y'all have to give him an A for effort. Stand by. Um. <laughs> now we got to... <laughs> Oh, perfect. Was... All right. Well, hey. Was... <laughs> control. I pushed too many buttons. So. <laughs> well, welcome, Jeannie and Davis. Hey, thanks so Thank much you. for having us, guys. <laughs> it's it's been good. great to uh, okay. finally okay. catch up and, and meet you We're guys. Good. It's been a long time coming. Hey, man, I, I've been watching you guys for quite a while. I don't know how long. A uh, long time. Yeah, He's, quite a while. Yeah, and, you uh, talked about I, I just, it for a while. Really impressed with your growth and the fact that husband and wife team, like we, and uh, growing together and building a business. And I just, I, I have respect for you and I appreciate it. So, well, thank you very um, much. Yeah, we've been. If you'll just kind of tell us a little bit about yourself to get us started. If For those that don't know. Yeah. Tell us about Jeannie and Davis. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, I'm Davis. This is Jenny. Um, <laughs> you guys. We, uh, we met in college. and uh, In Arizona. And we got married shortly thereafter. And then we both commissioned into the Air Force. And we spent four and a half, five years, um, at least I did, in the Air Force, uh, full-time active duty. We were stationed in California, stationed in North Dakota. Um, and then finally, we transitioned into the reserves because now we're a part of the Hurricane Hunters, which is a part-time unit that flies through hurricanes for research. And we also fly through winter storms and in, in the off season. So we stay busy year round doing that sort of stuff. But in the meantime, we, uh, we accidentally started a woodworking business. Um, and then we also started a YouTube channel because, you know, a business wasn't enough stuff to handle yeah, going gotta, on. Got to put more on your plate because, you know, yeah. 80 hours a week, a woodworking business, you know, why not throw a YouTube channel in there? <laughs> that's right. So, uh, yeah, that's sort of the very quick version of the story, but, um, yeah, that's that's us. And um, now we're here documenting our journey as we yeah. start our second woodworking business here in Houston. So tell us about that. one. 
the second one. Yeah. So um, to tell you about that one, we got to back up and talk about the first one that yeah. <laughs> happened by accident. So we were stationed in North Dakota and um, I convinced Jenny to let me buy a whole bunch of tools because I figured that I, I watched my dad woodwork growing up. Yeah. I was too stubborn to learn anything from him, but I, I, I knew that people built their own furniture and I knew how much tools cost. And then when we went furniture shopping as a newly married couple, I knew that I could build something way stronger and way better with for just the price of the tool. Not you know? to mention that it is so cold in North Dakota that we were like, oh, look, a potential hobby. Yes, please. <laughs> something that I can do indoors so I'm not freezing and I'm not bored. <laughs> right. So indoor hobbies are, are, are pretty important up there. So we got a bunch of tools and we started woodworking. Well, it wasn't long until all of our friends wanted stuff. And I'm sure a lot of the listeners and viewers uh, have a very similar story. The friends start hitting them up for stuff and you start doing things and you're not charging a whole bunch of money for it because, you know, you're just learning. You're just starting yeah. out. And then um, I just got so burnt out from it. And Jenny suggested, why don't you raise your prices a little bit? Because I was just doing stuff at cost, man. Mm -hmm. I would take... I would take my friends to Home Depot. I'd put all the stuff on the big orange cart and I'd have them swipe their card at checkout and I would build it for them for free. Yikes. I'm, I'm embarrassed to say that now, but <laughs> that's how we started. And so I got really burnt out doing that. I, I was working 80 hours a week with the Air Force and woodworking no longer was a hobby or a, a stress relief. It was a stress inducer. Mm -hmm. And so Jenny said, well, you know, not to be rude or anything, but let's, let's start valuing our time a little bit. So Jenny said, why don't you double cost of materials? And we thought, okay, great. About half the people should cancel their order and we'll get to have some free time back in the schedule and, you know, we'll make a little bit of money too. Well, we doubled our prices and no one canceled their order. <laughs> so back at square one. <laughs> so we built that batch of furniture and continued. And then the next batch, Jenny said, let's double it again. <laughs> and so we doubled it again. And then for a short period of time, we were making more money selling furniture than Uncle Sam was paying both That's of us awesome. um, to work in the military. So... Doing that in the background, starting the YouTube channel, that was going. And then out of nowhere, Jenny gets an email from somebody in the Air Force. She's not even supposed to get an email from those talking the, about the best emails, <laughs> talking about reserve units, part time units in the military that were hiring. And we recognized the hurricane hunters. One of our dream jobs yeah. was on that list. And so we called up who our boss is now. And we said, hey, are we wasting our time if we come down and interview? And she says, no, no, come on down. And so we go down, we interview, we get the jobs. And then we think, what are we going to do? This is only part-time work. Uh, like, can we make this woodworking business work? And we knew that because we had made more money selling to friends and family and, and the local community in a rural, yeah. in North Dakota of all places, if we can make it work there, we can make it work anywhere. So with that confidence, um, we were blessed enough to have the opportunity to, to move down here to Houston and start the whole yeah. business over. And our goal was not just to make money for ourselves. Our goal was to build a business that we could provide jobs for other people. Yes. We could pour into other people as other people have poured into us, you know, the whole discipleship model and just really grow the business that way. Um, because we, we think that, you know, I think Americans are, are kind of tired of the, the cheap overseas quality of furniture. And if we can provide a meaningful job for, for people that, that want to, you know, work with their hands and, and grow as people at the same time, uh, we're all about it. So that's the long version of the story, but that's why we're here <laughs> and we're, we're trying to build a business that can hire people. That's, that's our main mission right now. I yes. like it. Thank you for your service, both of you, very much. Uh, I know a lot of people uh, express the okay. same sentiment. We will have Absolutely. questions from viewers, obviously. One of them was in the members only and I missed it and it's in here again. Uh, R.H. Harley wants to know how you um, get past your fear, basically, and, and to start something. I know you, you guys have a, a motto that you use on your channel. <laughs> Yeah, we just changed it. You want to tell them what it is? Yeah, yeah. So uh, when we we, we read it, redid our intro, and uh, so it's kind of one of those things where it's like a lot of people say, you know, follow your dreams, follow your passion, really follow your passion. And and we've found that by following our fears, a lot of times we learn so much more about our passion. So it's like follow your fears and take your passions with you. Your passion, no matter what you're doing, if you're a passionate person, you should be able to find your passion in, in multiple areas. Um so, yeah. Yeah. But to answer the question, I don't know that we ever conquer our fears. I just think they get smaller as we get mm -hmm. exposed to them, as we try it a little bit more. It, we're not so scared to do it. Yeah. So it's not about getting rid of the fear. It's about accepting it and saying, all right, challenge accepted. Yeah. Learn how to live with fear. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Because fear, it's a natural part of life. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be some aspect of fear somewhere. 
And so you have to learn how to cope with it. And I think that's, I love that. Yeah, that's good. Uh, George mm-hmm. Mendoza says to you, awesome, Matt, got the sound. This is for your button pushing support. Thank you, man. <laughs> he said, love you guys. <laughs> Thank you, George. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Brad McNamara says, so you guys cut, uh, sell a lot of cutting boards I see on your YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. And the the model that you use to get those at, at, at scale or sell a bunch of those is I like it. It's a really good idea. So you can talk about that. Uh, he says, uh, do you worry about it being oversaturated for cutting boards? No, uh, the saturation just tells us there's money there. Um, mm-hmm. w- that's if, if you, I'd encourage you to, to Google the phrase abundance mindset mm-hmm. and really understand what that means and just understand that there is more than enough money out there. Uh, we did the math not too long ago. If you divide up the number of millionaires in the United States, and you divide that by the number of cities in the United States, there are a thousand millionaires for every city in the United States. That's interesting. There is more than enough money out there. Just because a market is saturated does not mean you can't be competitive. You just got to get in there and find a way to make yourself unique, find a way to stand out, find a way to to reach an audience that hasn't been reached yet for your product. And to just get started in general, because you'll never know if it works or not unless you try it first. So you guys uh, sell to real estate agents a lot, right? Mm-hmm. How do you how do you get your foot in the door there? Now, I've seen some of your videos, but some of our audience probably haven't. Yeah, there's a lot of different things that we do. Um, I guess the big picture is just to um, provide value to them in some way. Before you ask for the sale, you got to give them something, whether that's a compliment, whether that's a, a tip or a trick, or you see something that's, you know, like they've got a link broken. There's a lot of things that we see r- wrong on their website. There's They've got broken links on their website. You want to give them something, give them some sort of value. Mm-hmm. And then when they say thank you, you say, all right, cool. And anyway, um, can I also talk to you about X, Y, or Z? Right. And you, you've provided a service first, and then they're willing to listen to you. But if you just go banging on their door or waltzing into their open house, it's not going to turn out very well for you. So yeah. try to find a way to give to them first, build them up, and then you might have the opportunity to ask. That's funny. Looking for the broken link. Yep. I like that. Journey Woodwork <laughs> said that this is nuts. Literally their favorite top channels on one live. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. It's awesome. <laughs> uh, where do you guys, uh, where were you stationed in North Dakota? Uh, this uh, Jake Butcher says he's in, uh, nor- and he's up by Grand Forks. Woodworking is just a hobby for him uh, like it was for you, but he's, thinking about going local and selling. Yeah, I think there's totally a market up there. We mm-hmm. never made it over to Grand Forks, but we were stationed in Minot, which I think is a smaller town um, than where yeah, Grand Forks is. Grand Forks is also so closer too. to Fargo, so he's got a lot more access to hardwood lumber than we did. Oh, We'd yeah. have yeah. to drive eight hours round trip. Do you remember that? Yes. Oh, oh my gosh. We, it would just be a, we'd make a weekend out of it sometimes. We would say, hey, we want to go to the, like the good lumber dealer because there was a smaller one between us. Um but they were always out of stock and everything. Right. So we had to drive eight hours round trip and to so get. We'd be like, all right, we'll stay in a hotel, you know, Friday night. We'll pick the lumber up Saturday. We'll make a whole weekend out of it just because it was such an ordeal to go get wood. <laughs> and we'd buy everything the guy had. Yeah, poor then, guy. We'd clean him out in one day. <laughs> and that would be our stock for the next couple months. That's awesome. Uh, so this is a little off, but Stephanie said looking for the broken link. That's actually how she met her husband. Really? I don't oh know wow! The story is <laughs> I would love to hear that story. Yeah, Hoss One Twenty Two says of those thousand millionaires in each city, zero of them are state police. <laughs> so sorry about that, Hoss. <laughs> true. So sorry. Yeah, he's a former uh, yeah. coworker of mine. <laughs> uh, uh, Swedish Nut says, "Do you only make edge grain cutting boards for realtors?" Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, there's just, it's, we design the product at the price point that would, uh, that realtors are going to spend and you just can't do end grain if you're going to go uh, at that price point. It just doesn't make financial sense. So, and, uh, Swedish, not Swedish, uh, Damon Barber wants to know what are the main woods you use on your cutting boards? Oh yeah. We use, uh, eight quarter cherry and hard maple. maple yep. Yeah. Humphrey Woodworks says, how do you find your customers and how do customers find you? That's always a big question Mm -hmm. uh, we get a lot. So how do you go about finding new, new customers? 
Um, it's you're going to think that we're crazy and you're going to think that we're not taking the question seriously, but it's really just talking to people. Yeah, it's, literally. You don't need a fancy trick. You don't like the broken links thing on Instagram is really smart and it sounds really cool, but it's not going to replace just talking, talking to 30 people. Um, mm -hmm. That's how we just sold this kitchen table that we we're talking about a little bit earlier is we just talked about our business and mm -hmm. um, so many times we're looking for a cool trick or a neat tip, but you know, in reality, we just need to talk about our businesses more. Yeah. Um, I was a marketing major and one of the, the things my marketing professor always said was if you can get someone else talking about you, that's the greatest advertisement you can get. You just have to mm. make sure they're saying the right thing about you. <laughs> is <there a> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, that is good. That's yeah. a one, two punch there. I like yeah. it. Yeah. That's a good tip. He was fantastic. He passed away uh, a short while back, but he, yeah, he was a cool he dude. Was, he yeah. was pretty cool. He would have liked that coffee table with all those weird looking legs. Yeah, on he it. would. Yeah, he liked it. Mackenzie Lumber Mill wants to know what are your most popular videos, and so glad you got your lumber returned. Oh, thanks, Mackenzie. <laughs> Thank you. I guess yeah, I, I recognize her comment from uh, earlier when we posted a video today. Um, our most popular videos. Um, I don't know. We really don't pay attention to our analytics very much. I. Um, I think the ones where we like make, we've had like a big change maybe. I don't know. Uh, well, there was our, our number one most viewed video is the five projects that sell best. Mm -hmm. I remember Matt, you were talking about that on Steve Ramsey's show yeah. not too long ago about how you saw that video and you made your version of it. Yeah. And there's several others that have made their version of it. It's kind yeah. of funny that that's our number one yeah. video because we filmed that video in like 10 minutes. Yeah. That's back when we were trying to post couple times a week yep. and we were like oh my gosh we need a video and we ran all over the house just looking at the things that we were starting to sell to our friends and like we just pulled that video out of thin air basically and then youtube chose that one to be yeah. the one that right <laughs> put that one on the pedestal was the number one video of ours That's That's funny. Funny. oh yeah thank funny. you because uh, i saw that video and i saw the size of your channel at the time and i was like i could make that video with my projects and and Maybe it'll do all right. And we made it. Yeah. It, it it literally that video literally changed our life because it it took the channel to where it is now and mm -hmm. was allowed me to go full time here. So yeah. and that's awesome. Hmm. Yeah, I know you so guys uh, concept, you went full time pretty yeah, recently. So that's, that's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, that's very cool. Yep. He's trying to make me go full time with it. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, it's fun. <laughs> uh oh. Man, it went away. Okay, Nick's workbench said that he's trying to expand his online presence. What's the best route for leaning the uh, learning? Sorry, I have my contacts in for mm -hmm. learning the shipping side of selling. Mm. Mm. The shipping. I don't know that we selling. have much to offer there because we don't really do a whole lot of online marketing and selling yet. Um, yeah. And we don't like to give advice that we haven't tried out ourselves. So right. I, I'm sorry, we're kind of helpless there, but we, right. we can refer you to a good uh, shipping pricer. So we use Shippo. If you That's just go shippo.com. Is that the same one y'all use? Mm -hmm. Yep. The math apple. Okay. Literally a little hippo. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> That's the best place we've found for shipping prices. That's about all, all yep. the good work. Mm -hmm. They're really the convenient too. Shippo oh, is really, it's, it's user friendly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we definitely. use it because it integrates with uh, Squarespace, which is our website provider, and I can just hit. Yep. Well, when I go to Shippo, all my orders are already there, and then I can just, you know, I've got um, templates or whatever, and you can just uh, basically make everything almost automated. And we don't ship anything big. And a lot of people ask about large shipping items. We only ship smaller items because when you get into bigger items, you get into freight shipping. Mm -hmm. O Dark Thirty says, in your opinion. What is the sweet spot for posting videos and how often do you do them? How many per week or month? <sighs> oh, um, we tried a couple months ago. We tried daily vlogging. Never tried it before. And so we just decided. Give it a shot. For, so for like, what was it like at least a month? Yeah. month and a half or so. We posted a video every single weekday. I think we only skipped one or two days and that backfired. Um, mm -hmm. Our channel really slowed down and we were approaching 100K. And we thought that if we posted every day, that it would just push us over the top. And then it totally backfired. Yeah. Our subscriptions completely plateaued. People enjoyed the videos. Yeah. They loved them. It was fun for us to make them. And it was totally sustainable. But um, that was one moment where we did take a look at the analytics and saw that it backfired. And we thought, well, if if we're not reaching as many people, then what's the point? You know, Because the whole point is to help the most amount of people we can. And yeah. 
we if certainly it's not don't doing wanna, that then right we certainly don't want to do anything that's going to hurt us so mm -hmm. uh, it's 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 channel by channel too i mean you look at <clears throat> what casey neistat was a daily vlogger and and basically made himself through that but yeah. ours is like I tried one video a week and you can start seeing it kind of fall off and I do two and it started picking back up. So two is a sweet spot for us. Yeah. That's what it seems like it is now. Mm -hmm. Rick Coulter wants to know, um, what's the coolest thing you've made with your Glowforge? Mm. 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 The coolest thing. We made a really funny no soliciting sign the other oh day. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. We uh we have this wonderful no soliciting sign uh that we made. We saw it on Etsy or or somewhere um on a on a meme or something, and then we sort of personalized it. But it says it's you know because you get a lot of solicitors at the house and stuff, and so um it's a very polite, very funny no soliciting sign. We made one for a friend who had a, a bad run in with some solar panel salespeople the other day. Oh. Um, but it it says it says no soliciting. Uh, we're too broke to buy anything. We know who we're voting for. We found Jesus. Uh, unless you're selling Girl Scout cookies, please go away. Uh, you gotta That's have funny. the Girl Scout cookies. That's hilarious. Yes, you can't turn them away. Those are right. No. no, but it makes people laugh, and it you know it it works. Yeah. It's it's worked That's for hilarious. us, and I hope it'll work for our friend. That's the funniest you thing. You can we've sell those. Yeah. I would so buy mm -hmm. one of those. Uh, Driftwood wants to know. He says you bring up Dave Ramsey. What are your thoughts on usury or debt, and how it affects your business ventures? I think he said Steve so, Ramsey. Uh, uh, yeah, but they said Dave Ramsey on here. Close enough. Same guy. <laughs> Close yeah. enough. Come on. Yeah. It's all, <laughs> one of them Ramsey guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, as far think, as business is yeah. concerned, so we one of the best pieces of advice we got from our business mentors um, <clears throat> was that you want to only take advice from people who are doing what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for the type of business that we want to run, debt is not scary at all. Um, it's, it's just not, it's, it's a tool that we can use and you got to be responsible with it. Just yeah. like you wouldn't be irresponsible with a table saw, you know, there's a, there's a right and wrong ways to use it. Debt is the same way. Now, personally, I hate personal debt. Oh, I'll yeah. probably never be in personal debt ever, ever again, but for a business, it's just another tool to use to, to leverage. Yeah. So uh, gotcha. do some research, talk to a good CPA, a yes. good small business lawyer, but really only take advice on money. That's one of the best life lessons we heard um, from people who are doing what you want to do. Successfully. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> the, uh, that's, yeah, thank that's, you for that. That's the key right there. <laughs> Amy's saving the day over here. <laughs> yeah. Only, only um, members only, uh, we had a question that I didn't get asked to you. Uh, they want to know how far in advance do you film your videos from, from the time you film them to the time they're released? I, they're actually pretty close in time, I'd feel like. So when you're watching, you know, something we do throughout the week, it was probably actually that last. Yeah, week. that it was literally that last week. Very um, rarely do we go more than a week behind you know, uh, to grab footage or something for a video. So when you see the little I mean, because our whole YouTube channel is is just documenting our process. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. um, what you see in that week is is 90 percent of what happened that week. If it didn't, it may have been slipped one day to the left or to the yeah. right our but. goal is to truly take people along on like the actual journey and what it actually looks like to to physically run the business day to day and so by um keeping that timeline pretty close uh, hopefully we're you know conveying that successfully and y'all changed that up on your channel what a couple of months ago right where you changed to basically following that along more or am i thinking about something? yeah i mean those were always sort of that was always the tone of our videos and we were trying to stuff tips and tricks and advice and all sorts of that into the video and it just made it too heavy um people would get in there re watch the tips and tricks then they'd get out of there and then if we just did a vlog the vlog people were happy and the tips and tricks people were unhappy and we said well what's the most sustainable for us? Cause I mean, we're running a woodworking business. Yeah. We got military jobs still. We're also running a YouTube channel. We're trying to do a bunch of other social media. We got to do something that's sustainable. Mm -hmm. And so the most sustainable thing for us was just to document what we're doing, which was the whole point from the very beginning, from our very first upload, it was just me building a toy chest for a, a friend of mine, his, his son, um, and just documenting that process mm -hmm. and trying to share it. And then um, the videos sort of came out of that, but yeah, you're right. In the last couple of months or so, we've been a lot more conscious about that. And, um, our channel has become a, a, I don't want to say a vlog channel, but it's become a vlog yeah. channel. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, Trip Robin says that he has enjoyed the video that shows you using templates for your charcuterie boards. So, mm. ah, yes, yes. You, yeah, you uh, guys... Amy Swan did a great new tool with the the vacuum. Uh, have oh, you, have yeah. I showed you this? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you've had a chance to play with it yet, Matt, but um, no, man, it's it seems like it's going to be a game changer. Really? And that's essentially what our jig does, but his does it a lot more fancy. So <laughs> check out Izzy Swan's vacuum templates. Um, yeah. That's probably where we're headed in the next couple months. Those are really cool. <laughs> uh, I have a question. Thank you, Ramblin Woodworker says that he's watching his favorite couples on YouTube right now. Y'all are awesome <laughs> and such an inspiration for me. Thank uh, you. So Woodcraft 716 says, can you tell us about your lumber debacle? <sighs> <laughs> this I don't Debacle. know about this one. Debacle. Uh, yeah, I mean that's basically what today's YouTube video was yes. about. But um, the short version of it is that we uh, we called in an order of lumber, and we went and picked it up. It just looked like your run of the mill, no pun intended, yeah. rough cut <laughs> lumber. Um, and we got it home, and we knew there were some some checks and some cracks in it. But I always order extra because um, it's just it's not worth our time to pick through the pile to get the best boards. Yeah. Like if when you when you actually do the math, it's cheaper for us just to call an order in, add twenty percent to it than it is for us to pay ourselves labor to dig through the whole pile mm -hmm. to look for the best boards. Um, so we got the pile of lumber home and we started milling it, and we realized that it was just completely shredded. Which is so odd because usually we get such high quality stuff, and we were like, oh, this something's up. Like it's so just not right. I learned a new term today. It's called honeycombing. Ah. We had a, a sawmill operator or somebody down in the comments helping oh. us out today, giving us new terminology, but it's called honeycombing. And it's when they dry the wood too fast and it yeah. starts to split and shred apart, oh. kind of like a cheese or I don't know what else. A uh, honeycomb. Sh shredded chicken, <laughs> pulled pork, something like that. <laughs> And uh, now I'm hungry. And uh, so, yeah, it was just, it was all shredded to bits and was improperly dried. And apparently it, we called the lumber dealer and uh, they wanted us to bring it back. And apparently that was the the first few boards in a new shipment that they had just got. Yeah. And so they were about to ready to, they were mad. They were about ready to pack it up and ship it back to them. Yeah. So, yeah. So you um, might save them a bunch of heartache too, because if they just sold all yeah. the other stuff to everybody else. That caused a lot of trouble. Right. Do you know what that video was on the debacle? That was the one that we saw earlier. Oh, yeah. It had all the cracks in it. He just didn't know that. Anyway. Yeah, um, I watched that right before. Those of you for... that are asking questions on Facebook, I'm going to go back and catch you up. I forgot to check those questions. Girl, you both be catching. Oh, I don't listen to you. Uh, <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all don't have that problem working together, right? You listen to each other all the time. Oh, no, never. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Daryl McMillan on Facebook has a question for you. Do you use live edge wood for cutting boards? We've used some live edge for charcuterie boards, but not cutting boards. That was a very quick answer there. Oh. Uh, I'm, tr I'm trying to get down to the questions <laughs> that they were giving me states. Uh, Logan Rowe said he just started following J and D and they have given him the courage to start his own business. Don't know. It's awesome. uh, I didn't know they were Christ followers until now, and I'm so thankful for that. Please tell them I'm blessed to follow their journey. So, super cool. Thank so you, you very guys much. offer <laughs> a service on your website called the Stud Stack, right? Yeah, so we we have we have two products. We have uh, the first one is the Stud Stack, which mm -hmm. is just a private community of um, other makers who run businesses. But what we're really excited about launching is our newest program. That's mm -hmm. called My Basement Business. It's everything that we've learned from starting both, businesses. both of our businesses out of our house. It's a very simple formula to follow. The program walks you through the entire journey from picking a business name to picking a product to, to what it's, to actually yeah. say to the first few people to make your first few sales and the workbook tracks your progress on everything. And um, that's what we're really excited about right now because as we start to, to do more in this big industrial space, we're going to lose our... Um, like it's going to be, it's going to be harder for people to relate to us because we're in a big shop with a lot of tools and we just don't want to be so far out of reach that people don't think that, um, you know, what, what we've learned isn't helpful to them. So, um, while it's fresh on everybody's mind that we've, we've built businesses out of our own homes, we want to share and brain dump everything that we've learned mm -hmm. just to help out the next people. So, awesome. um, you can get that by, <clears throat> you can find the program, go to mybasementbusiness.com. <clears throat> or you can find it on our website. Sorry. Um, 
<laughs> but yeah, that's that's basically our uh, our little plug there. Thanks for that. Okay, well you you completely stepped I over apologize. Logan Rose's comment about apologize, you know yeah Logan you were talking about God and Christ and he's like <laughs> stud stack. <laughs> Um, <laughs> we had to make, we had to make room for the important conversation. That's, that's go. the main thing. Get all that other stuff out of the way. First. But, uh, do you want to say anything else about that? Um, uh, because you know, I, when you said earlier, you were talking about, um, being Christians and Logan said he didn't realize that. So I, I enjoy that, that y'all said that too, because that's what we're all about. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much sure. for being open about that too. That's one thing that, that we hear from a lot of people. They say, you know, thank you for being open with your Christianity. I think in today's world, sometimes it's not so easy to be open with that. So that's why I didn't want to skip over it, because I wanted no to say thank you for being open about that also. <laughs> well, we appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, we uh, Absolutely. we don't necessarily hide it at all. Um, we yeah. really like, you yeah. know, the YouTube channel, Dude Perfect. We really like sort of how they follow it. It's yeah. They don't openly talk about it, but if you do any amount of digging into who they are and there any of their additional content, I mean, I, I know we've said it multiple times on our podcast before, um, we really like how they toe the line of how much they say and, and how much they don't. So yeah, and how much they just yeah. simply portray. But it's it's yeah. so great to meet other uh, believers that are yeah, also doing absolutely. this. It's it's yeah. more fun. It's it's mm -hmm. easier to make faster friends that way yeah. too. So yeah, I think that's the way he does it. He likes to wear the shirt and is kind of mm -hmm. subtle. Oh, okay. Do you know what time it is? Power tip time. <laughs> oh. He's he's sneaking us. Watch I, I've emailed TV. you before uh, the show and asked you to come up with a power tip if you've had the time to come up with one. Let me know if not. We'll make one up on the phone. Uh, yes. Oh, we're the ready. Tip. We're ready. Do you want to do it or do you want me to do it? Here you go and I'll and I'll follow. All right. <laughs> so this is going to be kind of jarring and stay with me. Oh, okay. yeah. I promise. I promise it's coming from a good spot. Uh -oh. Our pro, our power, was it power tip? Power pro tip. tip? Power, power tip. tip. Power tip <laughs> is stop watching content. Yes. Stop watching content. Get out there and do it mm -hmm. stop asking questions stop watching video as much as matt and amy and jenny and i would love for you to go on an all-night bender watching <laughs> all, all to the oh. bottom of our feeds <clears throat> get out there the and go do it because okay. there's some lessons that only experience can teach you you want to talk about that Absolutely. yeah and <clears throat> so many things that we that we've learned it hurt really bad doing it wrong the first time but after we did it wrong the first one or two times, we had so much, I guess, um, experience in how to do it right <laughs> the next few times. And had we not gone out on a limb and, and tried it and not been afraid of failure, uh, we would have never figured out how to do it correctly. And that's something we learned in the military because there's just some things that they put you through. Yeah. I mean, everybody's seen the videos of boot camp and all that, but there's a bunch of other videos that aren't made for yeah. a reason. But there are some experiences, there are some situations in life where you don't know how you're going to react unless you have been in it. And I know, mm -hmm. Matt, you know that lesson very well. Yes, um, law enforcement too, same thing. But in business, it's the same way that you can sit there and you can watch a YouTube video, you can buy, you can join the stud stack, you can buy every program, you can watch every YouTube video on the subject, but nothing will replace getting out there with your fear and talking to somebody anyway. So if anybody's hesitating, whether they're trying to change their job, improve their life, start a business, whatever it is, just take your fear with you and run straight towards it. Get out there and make some solid. That's right. That's what we tell them all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, and that's, that's the hard thing for a lot of viewers is they do watch all of these videos and they do get very nervous about putting themselves out there. Um, so, you know, it's just like with I mean, anything else in life. I get nervous. I get nervous about trying a new project or making a new type of video or making the same video and it not doing well. You, you just, you worry naturally like we talked about earlier. It's just a natural thing, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, Gage Warren wants to know, how did y'all choose what to focus your business around? You want to talk about that one? I mean, basically we just focused it around what we feel like what problems we could solve, like what holes we could fill with what we build. Um, we have a lot of things that we enjoy making and we just had to figure out where that kind of fit. We're also people people. So we're always trying to help other people. So if, if yeah. we're always trying to see with our emotional eyes mm -hmm. um, where where there's pain points and yeah. is there a way that we can solve that problem for somebody and how can we help them? Yeah. 
it's almost like that sand need fill a need from yeah, robots. the robots movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, um, Mr. But you got to you got to <laughs> do it in a way in which you can find happiness too. So you know, I think that's important. Um, Moose works. She's here. I don't know. I don't think she's on here tonight. Is it but, Is her yeah. Sorry. She I, may have homework. Or something. Yeah, I think she's in there working on something. Sorry. Uh, Eddie Hackleman wants to know. Or yeah, Hackleman, did you make the United States map on your wall with your Glowforge, and was it made of? I think the uh, oh i'm so embarrassed we uh we were gifted this cork map yes and i don't remember who it was we'll uh, uh i've got to look it back up you know what we're gonna make a special instagram post about the cork map out yeah. of our embarrassment oh it's like geo something geo -E well, print or something yeah like we'll that. we'll put it back up but we'll make it right i'm sorry y'all but <laughs> um, no we were gifted the the cork map because uh, he's got a whole business making these cork maps and they're and they're really high amazing. quality they're they're layered plywood and then they've got a small layer of cork on top. So they're just they're Wait. perfect. They're solid. They're, yeah. They'll last a long time. And um, are they? Yeah, it's a map of all. The, is that where you uh, mail things to, or you have business from that sort of thing, or travel? Visit, yeah. Those are those are all the members of the stud stack that oh. have sold a product and shared that with the group. That's so oh, cool. you know, one of the I things like in the stud stack is once you get to a certain point, we, you get a certain status, and once they've sold something and broken that down for the group they get their their name on the on the map so that's cool it's something we like to do for those guys jimmy dunn says jd from a retired b52 crew dog what was what was the biggest thing you took from the your time in the great white north oh man Com community like people <laughs> people um when you're in a in a place like that um, especially in the, the B 52, the, you know, the air force lifestyle that's, that's up there. Um, you're working a lot of hours. What you're doing is very critically important. Um, so it's, it's a lot of hours. It can be a lot of stress. And so you got to find good people, um, to stick around with and, and support each other when it gets hard and cold. <laughs> and so that's, I think that's what I, I took away from it the most is like how to form a community and you know, how to make it a strong one. Um, for me, it was the, the lesson bloom where you're planted. I heard that a lot growing up. And then when we got moved to North Dakota, it was not by choice. Uh, it wasn't even the job that the Air Force had paid for me to get a degree in. And so um, I really had to step out on faith and just figure out how to bloom where I was planted. And I tried everything I could to squeeze as much as I, I could out of those four years. Hilltop Rustic Design says, could you guys go over how you started an LLC and go over how to keep track of the orders? Hmm. Um, LLC for Texas, it's pretty straightforward. You yeah. just print off the form from the website and mail it in with a $300 check and boom, you got a business. <laughs> um, it's $45 in Arkansas. I just filed it. Is it really? Nice. Wow, nice. It's, you do it online, yeah. you pay right there. A couple of days later, oh, that's you get cool. an email with your mm -hmm. thing and you print it out yourself or just save it, whatever you want to do with it. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know some states it's pretty hairy. I had a friend that started a business in California and he oh. had to pay a couple thousand dollars a that's year just to keep cheap. it running. It was nuts. Mm. Oh, wow. How do you keep track of your orders? Um, so a lot of that, it just flows like through our website. Um, it'll keep track of the inventory for us. And uh, yeah. And then Shippo, obviously we're talking about Shippo. Shippo yeah. really helps for keeping um, all the like labels organized and clear and ready to go. Pretty plug and play. I realized that he was not keeping track of everything for the whole year last year. Um, you know, because I That's am still working. That's what the year's for. And so. <laughs> now I'm with Matt on this one. Yeah. So um, we're doing it quarterly now with an accountant. But now I'm having to go all the way back January 1st of last year yeah. through December Here's 31st. Here's some business advice for you for those that never owned one before. Don't wait till the end of the year because they'll penalize you in mm -hmm. taxes if you haven't paid quarterly. A lot. Yeah, so we're being yeah. penalized for that. But we've got everything, you know, handled. We've got a wonderful accountant out of Texas. Um okay. <laughs> we'll use an accountant there. Um, but man, you gotta keep up with that stuff and you need to if you don't know how to do it, you need to get with somebody that does know how mm -hmm. to do it. Uh don't take your legal advice from someone on the street. Uh mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah. know, get with somebody who really knows how to do that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right, Charlie guy, he's one of our regulars. He says, uh what computer or laptop do you use or suggest for video and running the business? Mm -hmm. What do y'all use? I'm curious. We're MacBooks. Mm -hmm. I got a MacBook okay. Pro, the M1, come out a couple years ago. For yeah, yeah. Final Cut Pro, it's like 
butter. I mean, 4K footage is nothing for it. She's got the MacBook Air. She got an older Mine model. I need edit. to upgrade hers a little bit, but uh, mm -hmm. that's what we use. Mackenzie yeah. Lumberman we said, I need to retire my business partner. I agree. <laughs> well, what do y'all yeah. use? Uh, we just switched to uh, the new IMAX. It's got mm -hmm. the M1 chip in them also. Um, we I had a custom built, like super fancy Windows computer. Um, but once we decided that we wanted to hire an editor full time, which yeah. we just hired Caleb a couple months ago, he's been great. But we needed to have a system and a procedure for an editor to come and go as they as they need. And Apple just makes it so yeah. easy to just mm -hmm. organize footage and um, just make it more plug and play. So we just recently switched over to Apple. And we like it so far. Yeah. Apple's amazing. Yep. I uh, had a, a Dell. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. I had yeah. a Dell and it was like pulling my hair out. Cause yeah. Was he was complaining constantly. I want to throw it out the window and I got this. And I'm like, this is good. Married man wants to know how have you stayed positive when others tell you that you can't do it or there are negative comments on your video videos. And then he says, this has probably never happened to you, but he just thought he'd ask anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I would imagine that I would deal with it by. Uh, no, <laughs> no, that was a great question. Um, yeah. We were actually talking about that earlier today. Um, it's it's a little mental trick that we do, mm -hmm. and we tell ourselves that everything is practice for the next thing. Um, okay. You're gonna think we're crazy, but ten yeah. years from now, we don't want to be building tables. We want to be building airplanes. Yeah. And so everything we're doing with this business, we're learning how a manufacturing business works. We're learning how to do YouTube. We're learning how yeah. to do TikTok also. And how people work too. Right. That way, 10 years from now, when we do this all over again, we can do it the right way. So mm -hmm. just telling yourself and sort of believing that little fib to yourself that it's all fake, okay. it's all for practice, can help carry you through a lot of the negativity because you think, eh, well, I'm just practicing. It's not really, it's not real. Yeah. yeah. That's good advice on it because a lot of people take that stuff so to heart. Um, mm -hmm. They they think that someone else's comment can dictate their success and it can't. You know, and that it, comment it, can only go as far as you let it go. That's right. And if you put yourself on the internet, somebody somewhere is going to have something bad to say about you or what you're building or yeah. what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, do you remember what we did when we first started posting YouTube yeah. videos? You want to tell yeah. that story? So when we first started posting, like, you know, you're a young channel and, and you know, the, the bad comments will come, um, but they're still kind of jarring when you see your first few uh, and they kind of hurt. And so what we did is we sat down for like how many days? For two weeks. For, for, for yeah, two weeks for straight. two weeks. And we just read them to each other every out night. loud. <laughs> every night over dinner, we pull up the YouTube channel and we would read every single comment dinner and a show. out loud to each other. And... Sometimes, sometimes when you say it out loud, we could just laugh at it. It just <laughs> deflates it sometimes. Yeah. Um, and then we finally moved to where, first of all, we moved to where um, it just didn't bother us anymore. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing is, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but it's, it's, you start to, to hurt for them. You know that they're hurting. You know that the people mm -hmm. that are, are sharing hate instead of love are not in a good spot and you just can't help but just pause and, and think about them or, or send up a quick prayer for them and, and just hope they have a better day and then just move forward. But Absolutely. Um, awesome. that's sort of how we, we've handled it. Michael Pafau, and yes, it's Pafau, you know, Pafau for like on Golden Girl. Oh my gosh. He says, does my basement business go over LLC taxes, et cetera? Yeah. So we, we cover that in the program for sure. If you go to mybasementbusiness.com, it'll outline everything that's in the program. Yep. You can take a look. Um, yeah. It yeah. should go there. If not, just send us a DM on, on Instagram. If you got a really specific question, we'll get an answer to you. Patrick Kerfoot wants to know if you have any suggestions on how to push a product. Says that they advertise on Facebook and they get a lot of likes, but no bites. Hmm. Mm. I just keep keep talking to people and find the avenue that works. Uh, if Facebook isn't the avenue that works when you, you know, open your mouth constantly, maybe you know, try another one or try portraying the information in a different way. Maybe people want to receive it differently in your area. Right. I mean, Facebook is just people, right? So mm -hmm. it, it, whatever works on Facebook should work in real life also. So if you're talking to enough people, you're getting honest, genuine feedback. You can take that to Facebook um, and see what it is that uh, isn't translating. So I, it's probably a great product. Yeah. It's just either not showing how it can solve a problem for somebody or uh, it just needs to be presented in a different way. Good deal. David Knott says, hurt people, hurt people. That's right. I like that. Stephen Gomez says, how did you decide 
on splitting tasks for the business, marketing versus milling stock versus editing, <laughs> et cetera? We chased our fears. Uh, yeah. Jenny had never done sales before. She was really scared of it. So we put her in charge of sales. She's the whole sales department. So. Yes. Department of one. Um, it's kind of funny whenever whenever Jenny and I are like say like you know I really hate that. It's sort of a double edged sword because now we're responsible for that in our business. Right. Like oh my gosh the bookkeeping. Oh uh, uh, yeah. Before I mean before we got a CPA and everything I did the bookkeeping and I'm just like I can't stand all these numbers. I can't stand the spreadsheets. But that's why I it's need to do different. it. I need to be able to learn it first. Yeah. yeah. Bookkeeping for a business is completely different. Uh, a lot of math minded people think. That if you're good at math, you're going to be good at that stuff. And everything works a lot differently uh, when it comes it's to It's a whole math. different language. It is. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I was talking to my careers class about that today. Um, Martin Lynn wants to know, can you give advice to get a small woodworking business going later in life? He says that he's 55, that his two favorite couples are on YouTube right now, that they're the best. <laughs> And inspire him says I'm slowly starting a, a small woodworking business again so do you have any advice for him he said he's had many years of uh, trying and he's actually a, right now a truck driver I wouldn't say 55 is later in life I'd say that's Either. right at the prime yeah. Um, yeah, so it's all about perspective and uh, gets younger every day <laughs> yep you get you, you got plenty of time and um, truck driving. You got a lot of time to think through. Yeah. Um, yeah. Use that time. Listen to audiobooks. Build build your. Uh, um, I know we sold you to quit listening to content earlier, but um, that's time that you can spend wisely, and um, you know consume content, learn business content. I would just say talk to people. You've got if you're 55 years old, you've probably got a huge network. That's of people. That's what I was gonna say. Use that to your advantage. You've met a lot of people over the years. So, yeah, yeah, that's just talk to. Yeah. Them. Yeah, my dad was a trucker, um, and you do. You meet so many people. Mm -hmm. Lucas, Use that to your advantage. Lucas says, how do you like your glow, glow forge? We really like it so far. I mean, it has done everything we need it to. Um, eventually, we will upgrade to probably a larger, faster laser, but as of right now, they are working great well yeah we started with a glowforge because we didn't know how a glowforge worked and we didn't have a good taste in our mouth after using a cnc mm -hmm. and so we didn't really want to spend a whole lot of time you know learning up the learning curve on a new tool and so we bought the one that was the easiest to use and that was a glowforge and i know we paid for it but to to see if it was going to work in our business or not it was the best decision ever we got a second one that mm -hmm. works as a backup um and then it, I mean that that those both of those la only one of those lasers is really what we've used at a time, and one laser has made us over fifty thousand dollars worth of cutting boards. So it was well worth it. Yeah, I was fixing to say you said you paid for, it, but how how long did it take for you to for it to pay for itself? You know, it was probably pretty quick. Uh, yeah, it was very quick. It was yeah, the first first batch of boards we sold. Yeah. The laser basically paid for itself. So. So Yellow Hammer had a comment. He said negative comments on his channel do not bother him. Because any comment helps the channel. Any engagement, negative or positive, helps. Besides, it's very hard to get under military skin. <laughs> yep, that's for yeah, sure. That is. <laughs> that's right, Yellowhammer. Beck, have, thank you, Becca, for yeah. uh, telling me that. The, I think that's what you were telling me to go back up and look at. I have been known to uh, stir the pot when they comment something negative or something. I'll comment and say something like, I appreciate, better. I appreciate you giving this video some more engagement or something like that they were, uh, <laughs> yeah. they can't help it they got to comment again so. yeah. yeah i like to have fun sometimes and mm -hmm. and and make a comment for the people reading the interaction right, right. Yes. you know i'm not going to change this person's mind but if i can make the next guy reading this interaction laugh you know yes. it's a win-win that's right i love having fun with those uh spam phone calls the telemarketer oh, yeah. she has a blast with <laughs> I mean, you know we've had great conversations so uh -huh. oh that's funny sometimes they get mad they get mad a lot. But I always have a good time. <laughs> so it's worth every time. That's the point. I That's answer great. them in the middle of class. <laughs> my students, if they see that my phone's ringing, they're like, is that a telemarketer? Please answer. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> Life lessons. Yeah. I mean, these are things that kids need to know. Sean anyway. Gleason wants to know what's your average price to sell wine caddies for? Um. Is that a question for y'all? We don't sell wine caddies. Yeah, we don't, no, we don't do either. wine caddies. Yeah, I've never sold one. Mm -mm. None of us drink wine. Zero dollars. Okay. <laughs> Whatever you price it at, make it profitable. <laughs> there you go. Uh, this question is for you. How is the Chapeco since you bought it? 
I plan on getting one. Hilltop wants to know that. I didn't buy it. Should probably go send it to me to use, try out, whatever. Um, it's been good. I made a bunch of mallet templates with it. Uh, that's what it's good for is batching stuff out. Uh, I don't use it to make custom projects or anything like that. Uh, well, I mean, kind of. We got some trays and things we sell, but I mean, it works good. But like they said earlier, there's a really big learning curve to the CNC that I wasn't expecting when I got it. So I'm still on the bottom side of that curve. And Stephanie says for you that if somebody comes down on Mad Outlaw, that they will hear from her. So I'm just putting that Hall out. Says Thank you, Steph. been trying to contact me about my extended Hall's, um Try my number. <laughs> extended warranty. Every time I get a phone call about an extended warranty, they ask me the make and model of my car, and I always tell them it's like a 1994 Schwinn. Yeah. Metal which is a bicycle. <laughs> they That's hate funny. that. But I'm like, come on, it's got a banana seat and everything. She had one of them one time tell her, um, she they kept wanting to get her credit card information, and she, finally she called us. She's like, you're not going to get that. You're not stealing my information. And he said, well, you can't blame me for trying. And then laughed and hung up. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. One of them asked me to marry him. Yeah. So uh, let me let you talk to somebody else real quick. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I have fun every single time. Anyway, you can have fun in life. Yeah. You just have to turn ugly into pretty. Uh, Damon Barber wants to know about your glow forge. Does it cut or is it strictly for etching? Uh, it, it cuts too. Um, It'll go we, up to, we've cut quarter inch plywood before. It ain't pretty, but it'll cut quarter right, inch plywood. Right. Cause that's what we did for our charcuterie board templates. Oh, half inch plywood. I'm sorry. Excuse me. It'll did cut we? quarter inch really pretty, but it'll cut half inch we plywood. We did. Do yeah, because that's inch. what we made our charcuterie jig out of. Yeah, nice. that is half inch. And yep. again, curious, it ain't pretty, but I'm curious now. How you said it was pretty easy to learn. Like you just how you. I mean, is it? Yep. It's it's really yeah. simple. It's two step. Like a CNC, you got spindle settings, you got feed rates, you got all sorts of stuff. Laser. It's two things. How 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 bright do you want the laser, and how fast do you want it to move over the piece? And that's it. it. You so just your it designs there. and stuff like that, where, do you make those or do you download them somewhere? Or how does that work? Uh, if it's for a custom board, we, we've got, I mean, we've got the alphabet and a wreath. So if it's an easy, like a letter or something, we'll pull that out with a font we've already made. But um, if it's like a custom message, yeah, we'll just type it up in Illustrator mm -hmm. and export it and then engrave it. Cool. I want a Glowforge. She wants a Glowforge. <laughs> there you go. I had a couple of knockoff companies email me wanting to send me their laser. And I'm like, I've never heard of you. I don't think so. He fights with the CNC a yeah, lot. We, we argue it from time they to time. They do. Jomo says, I'm currently a weekend warrior, basically trying to start a woodworking business. Have you read this one? No. Okay. Um, I typically would tell people that uh, order that want to order stuff that it can take up to two weeks for completion. With balance in a 40-hour week, family, et cetera, I often wonder if people don't want to commit and wait that long. What do you think? What are your thoughts on that? A two-week mm. wait. I think two weeks is a very fast turnaround. I thought um, so too. With this kitchen table, what do we tell them? Six weeks? Yeah, five and we, to five, And we had weeks. nothing in front of them. We were um, six to eight weeks out when we were doing yeah. uh, furniture builds. Yeah, I know Christina Glam Farmhouse. She's booked out for six months in advance. Yep. Um, yeah, it's there's two weeks. <laughs> you, I, I find it really hard to get a, a get a build done in two weeks. That would mm -hmm. be really really stressful. I'm wondering if yeah. this is a smaller build, maybe since he, he is working forty hours a week with family. I don't think two weeks is unreasonable at all. You tell me two weeks on something, I'm gonna start to wonder if maybe you're not taking long enough on it. <laughs> Well, it depends on what right. You, yeah. yeah, it's going to depend on like. It's like yeah. that uh, movie with McDonald's, uh, the founder. Oh, y'all yeah. seen that? Uh -uh. Where he's like, he goes up to the first McDonald's, and like, as soon as he finishes ordering, they put the burger and the drink in front of him, and he's like, "This isn't mine." Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, "Yes, sir, it that. is." And he's like, "Well, how how did you do this?" And then that's his introduction to McDonald's. That's oh, well. pretty cool. <laughs> Heck, it's taken two weeks for the guy that's uh, going to be doing our painting and sealing yeah. and stuff. He, said, he told me that. He said, it's going to take about two weeks. But I'm he like, works full time too, so he's doing this. As long as it ain't me doing it, man. Get after it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited that he's the one doing it. Okay, sorry. So a lot of people are liking that you guys are on here with us. Mm -hmm. We so had a lot of thank, requests for you guys. Yeah, thank all of you, you so much for all of the love and support. And I hope that y'all have had a chance to go through or will have a chance to go through and look at some of the comments about that because people are loving you. And if you want to subscribe and follow them, their links to their channels in the description. Uh, 
uh, on YouTube and Facebook, and then also Instagram and their websites down there as well. So be sure and give them a follow. So really quick, because I've waited really long, and yeah, I normally did. do it halfway through. I want to do a shout out to our states, and I may not have all of them on here because I've been trying to talk. Missouri, Texas, South Carolina, North Carolina, Florida, Minnesota, Ohio, South Dakota, North Dakota, Louisiana, Alabama, Virginia, Michigan, Canada, Massachusetts, hey. Georgia, Wisconsin, <laughs> Oregon, Oklahoma, Kansas, Iowa, Vermont, Arkansas, California, Kentucky, Pennsylvania, Indiana, Maryland, Tennessee, Colorado, Maine, Rhode Island, Germany, and... Okay, Michigan, I said Canada, <laughs> Nebraska, Alaska. Anywhere from Nebraska. Okay, anywhere. So okay. Everywhere, y'all. We have five minutes left. Is there anything you guys would like to share or talk about in the last five minutes? Why on me? Man. Well, first Florida's off, I just want to say thanks so much for having us. Yeah, this really. has been fun. I know we're both very busy, and, you know, it's it's kind of funny, like, People always apologize uh, for scheduling things, and it takes a long time to get schedules like this coordinated. But um, something that we've started saying a lot is, you know, we only want to be friends with busy people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the fact that it's hard to schedule something with people sometimes, you know, that's usually a good sign because busy people are yeah. productive people. They're they're people with full hearts, and they're given out of abundance. And yeah. we just want to say thanks so much for having us on and, and treating us well. Hey, we appreciate you guys, and thank again, you thank so you for much. your service. Uh, we really appreciate uh, that you sacrifice your time to serve the country gosh that's why they can chase fears though because they go chasing storms <laughs> that's right you guys rock <laughs> what's the contact it. info for the stud stack that's on your website oh. right yeah you can do two things you can send us a dm on instagram we'll get you the right place yep. or you can go to studstack.net.net and uh you can see all the info there awesome thank you gabe uh proverbs house says oh, yeah, Proverbs. There's probably been close to one of those. We just saw. What's that? We're having conversation oh, over here. <laughs> <You're not laughs> I got you. I got this you. is my part of it. All right, Charlie Gasses, do you <laughs> welcome Canadians into your stud stack? Absolutely. <laughs> We've had plenty of Canucks over the years. <laughs> That's awesome. That's funny. All right. Well, I don't want to take up too much of you guys' time. I know you guys are busy running a business, and uh, I just I appreciate you guys coming on. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, so this is so much fun. Been Thank nice you so much. It's so nice to meet you, Amy and Matt, and yeah. we'll uh, we'll see you around. All right, man. All right. Y'all have a good night. Good night. All right, guys. Thank y'all so much for joining us again another Tuesday night. Thank you for all the questions. Yeah, that was awesome. I thank them for coming on. They there was a good 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 couple there, uh, growing a business together, and it uh, looks like they're having a great time. So be sure and go check them out. They're like I said, stuff's in the description of this video to go uh, subscribe to their channel. I don't know what's going on on Facebook, but Lloyd's over there with Lloydville. Uh oh. I don't know. <laughs> I think I may have missed something Super over there. Jack. Not Thank sure. You, Clark. But uh, Lloyd Lloydville. Lloydville, and then he's like he's doing four minutes and three minutes because oh, you know he's no, the he's Facebook program, program yeah, director. Yeah, we got Stephanie programming directing on YouTube. <laughs> Lloyd is a program director now. That is Lloydville. It's no longer Live Edge on Did Facebook. You get... This is Lloydville. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, did you give Clark I his? Did. Okay. He says uh, that he challenges uh, Jeannie and Davis to wear face shirts like Matt and Amy, a testimony built on a cross commission with the crown of thorns, epoxy, red stain. That's pretty that's cool. All, I want to yeah, see that, Mr. Cool. Clark. Uh, Lloydville, though. Jeez. Lloydville. That was awesome. <laughs> Brian Boyles says, let's do a two-hour show. Yeah. Um, okay. So I get really tired after teaching all day she deals with seventh graders all day seventh <laughs> and eighth eight. graders lord bless her soul <laughs> oh my goodness so this this hour always gets me like mm -hmm. proud of and i love it and i have so much fun and then i'm like oh i'm ready to go to bed <laughs> we do i go straight to bed after the show i'm like shower and mm -hmm. bed dog fan wants to know where i found my sketchup programmer he found me uh his uh info is in the back of all the plans even the free ones so you can check those out Mr. Clark, thank you so much. Steph is our moderator back in there with our two-minute warning. If we missed your question tonight, I sincerely apologize. If you want, and we didn't get it because we just there was too many. If you want to email me or um, send me a message on Instagram or Facebook or them, if the question was for them, they'll be happy to answer. I'm sure. And if you I give got, it to me, I'll get it to them and try to get. I got to text you something. You got to put on there really quick. Text Hold me. On. Yeah. Hold on. I got to get to it. It's going to take me just a long time. A short second. No. Like, oh. How do I? Oh. 
<laughs> Do y'all have trouble working your phones too, or is it just me? Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> Get out of my yard. Seventh graders are easier than Matt. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably true sometimes. Okay, let's see if that is going to go through to the right thing. Yeah. Okay, so Lloyd, this is for you. This uh -oh. is only for you, Lloyd. Lloyd Wagner. Everybody else look away. Everybody else look away. So this Mo pointed out that my tree, I, keep, I have an annual tree that I keep up. And uh, Mo has pointed out that it, won't do it is something that Lloyd would like. So I'm Hold hoping on. he can pull Let's, it up on the screen for you. I got to save it and then pull it up this way. Oh, okay. He's, he's struggling over here, y'all. I gotta go you got something up there. 2017. Look. Yeah, that's not it. <laughs> what have you done? I don't know what you've done. <laughs> you can't put it on there. Why? Open and preview. How about that? Yeah. Maybe. How about that'll work? I think so. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see if it'll work. No, so, Lloyd, you got... Uh, I just may it, have to... It don't I, like it. I may have to put it in uh, the in our group chat thing, Lloyd, but I'll have to show it to you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It won't, it won't say Mr. Clark me. also said that I need to retire. Everybody's telling me that tonight. It's like retire, retire. everybody tonight has been like, you need to retire. <laughs> and of course, Damon, you did not let me down because I now see the monkey poo. <laughs> Tim Hart says, how much do you love the domino? The domino is really awesome. It's super fast. And oh, make things awesome. Mr. Ron's on there. The one oh, that sent us this. He's on there. We gave hey, you a shout out at the very beginning. I don't know. Yeah, you probably can't tell it, but it's dirty because he, he was like, where's the blue cup for the shout out? And I said, it's in my bag. I used it today. So it's still got coffee stains in it. <laughs> I loved it. That's awesome. You still never got it to work? No, it won't come up. Every time I hit it, it just shows the Facebook post. Seriously? Mm -hmm. Out of all the buttons you push. I mean, we can start pushing buttons. Oh my gosh. Hold on. Let me see. Let me try it. I'll hold push on. a button. I do this. I do this. See, it ain't work. Here, you hold it up there. All right. Hold it up there. All right, Lloyd. See if you can see face. that. What? How'd you face it? <laughs> this is so weird. It's her tree. Did it pull up? Yeah. How'd okay. you hit your face? <laughs> <laughs> it's green. <laughs> and he's the one that would appreciate that. Oh, it did show up after I hid my face. I told you. It's a St. Patrick's Day tree, though. So don't get your hopes up. Okay. We kept them late. Sorry for keeping you late. I'm going to push this button right here and see what happens. Okay. You ready? What? I'm going to push this button. What is that button? Better say goodnight. Oh, just in case. Good night, y'all. <laughs> y'all have a good night.